talking about a subject that appeals uh, to a lot of folks in the real estate investment business. If you've never heard anything about real estate investment, as I said, this is a great way to enter the market. If you're an experienced investor and you haven't bought notes or you haven't done it on the level Mark's going to be talking about, great opportunity to create passive income, create chunks of money. Also, can do it in your, uh, your self-directed IRA. So, great opportunity to learn tonight. Now, a little bit about Mark. Uh, I met Mark about a year ago. All right, he came to a, a couple meetings, different places we kind of met. We got to talking. He told me he was uh, investing in notes, and some of you know I've always been interested in notes and investing in notes, and, and have some here locally, and, and uh, it's always been a good vehicle. My very first tape said, as some of the emails said, it, I bought that, and as I got talking to Mark, I could tell right away that, and this guy really knows what he's talking about. He's doing this on a level that a lot of people don't do it on, and we kind of talk back and forth a little bit, and in the meantime. He wrote a, a, wrote a book, No Investing Made Easier, okay? uh, out there in the marketplace, doing very, very well. And so as we got talking about the summer schedule, I thought, man, Mark, you got to come and talk to our group. you got it going on. These folks need to know about no investing. And I thought he'd be a great person to, to, to talk with this knowledge and experience. So let's give him a warm welcome. Mark. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you for coming. Um, two things uh, that I'll ask up front. And first is, uh, please hold your questions to the end. And second thing, please don't get mad at me for anything. <laughs> I segue with John. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk to you about an opportunity that can change your life, as it's changed my life. And it's probably one that you've never been offered before. My name is Martin Sines, and I'm a mortgage note investor. What that means is I buy defaulted mortgage notes for pennies on the dollar and get those mortgage notes to perform. When those mortgage notes perform, I have long-term streams of cash flow coming in, in some cases up to 30 years. Most of the mortgage notes I buy were originated during the 2000s financial crisis, and, and um, the borrowers typically three to six years in default, so which means they haven't made a payment in three to six years. And I also buy those mortgage notes on a, on a nationwide level. The, most of you in the real estate game here are on the flip side of the coin. So what that means is whether you're wholesaling, flipping, or landlording, your, your focus is on the property and what you can squeeze from that property. For myself, as a mortgage note investor, I'm focused on the mortgage note and the, bar the borrower's ability to pay on that mortgage note debt, whether they're in default or they're performing. And pr the property is actually secondary in, in that focus. So as a mortgage note investor, again, uh, my primary objective is long-term streams of cash flow, up to 30 years preferably. Like most, um, like most folks in, in the area, um, I sought higher education um, coming out of high school uh, a, for a high paying job. That was kind of the, the theory. And after spending uh, eight years and several hundred thousand dollars um, getting degrees, I got a high paying job. Well, I hated every second of it and I was very bad at it. And I got fired in a, in a few years. So that was kind of the, my, my corporate career. So in the early 2000s, I, and this is just a few, a few things, a few minutes on myself. In the early 2000s, I met my wife. And um, in 2006, we started a museum exhibit company out of, out of our basement. And after incurring massive debt with getting that business up and running, um, we turned it into a multi-million dollar company. And um, in 2012, uh, my wife and I had our first baby, and I was stressed out of my mind with the with the business. And, you know, being a being a small business operator. For those of you who do it, you understand. So in 2013, we sold the company, and all the while, when I was receiving profits from from the business, I rolled those profits profits into buy and hold real estate in the Northern Virginia area. 
um, both commercial and, and residential. Uh, today I still buy, I still buy property. Uh, I picked up three single family homes uh, last October and one commercial building in December. So I'm still very active and I, and I self-manage um, our portfolio, my wife's and I, our portfolio. Um, what, what I, um, what I want to say is, uh, you know, today with, with having a, uh, building a portfolio of performing mortgage notes, which is what I want to talk to you about tonight, um, I'm able to, uh, you know, provide for my family while my wife stays home with our three children, soon to be four, as we start homeschooling, and um, I have a flexible work schedule that I never thought would be possible before. You know, going from uh, you know self-employment where you're a business owner and, and everything's fixated around yourself to to um, developing passive uh, uh, streams of income that are paying you every month. You know, once you get it set up in place. So, go ahead, Frank. Um, <coughs> Real estate, real estate investing is good, and you can earn a very comfortable living. You know, as you know, wholesaling, you can earn 5% on up on a deal. You know, flipping, the margins can be good if you're buying right and, you, and you've mastered your craft. And landlording can be um, very lucrative if you're working to pay down your property so you'll have an annuity, uh, you know, years later uh, that's cash flowing for you. But what I would say is that flipping is uh, an ongoing grind if done well and and it, wholesaling is as well and and so there is a wear and tear on you when you know it may be um you know very it may be very advantageous when you're in your 30s and 40s but it, it wears on you and it get it get tiring at a certain point and when you stop wholesaling when you stop flipping Guess what? When you stop, the cash stops. So where does that leave you at that point? And that's kind of where you know what what I want to say. Don't don't get mad at me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so um, with landlording, you know, uh, obviously, um, you know, things can happen if you buy wrong or the market crashes and, and so on. This is um, a property I bought in uh, in Hootsdale, Pennsylvania, which is outside State College. Uh, this is just kind of gives you an example. Um, and I have a few case studies tonight on these are some deals that, that I did flip you know over a few years but I do keep most of my uh, most of my notes uh, 2014 it's a first mortgage note outside State College the borrower owed fifty thousand dollars and the property was vacant so I bought this note from a peer that I had relationship with and I paid ten thousand dollars for the mortgage note well the property's vacant. That usually that usually signals to you that you can get a deed in lieu, whereby the, the borrower signs over the property in exchange for debt forgiveness. So reached out to the bar. Turns out it was a divorce situation, and the borrower didn't want to get past his past. So he signed over the property quickly, and I resold that property to a veteran and took a seller take back note uh, for four uh, four point six seven five. Um, Ten-year term, uh, you know, monthly payments paying me three hundred twenty-three dollars a month. So, um, in two thousand, uh, just a few weeks ago, I sold the note for uh, to another note investor, uh, as it is a performing note for sixteen thousand dollars, and I put the receipt up there just to show. After receiving two years of payments for uh, seventy-seven hundred dollars, Frank. That's a win-win. The, the business model that I have for note investing is, is called the win-win business model. In that case, um, the, borrower win, the borrower wins because they get past their past and I, and I forgive them of the, of the debt obligation. The, the veteran wins because he buys a property that he can live in and rehab and increase the value. I win because I, I receive a good return on investment the community wins because they rid themselves of a vacant property and they become healthier as a community as a result. So mortgage note investing, um, helping borrowers get back on their feet is, is a win for everybody. That's kind of what I wanted to um, just relay here tonight. With, um, 
with more with real estate, you know, um, you know, the hustling in real estate is good, but what I'm going to say tonight is that is that creating 30-year streams of cash flow, paying you monthly at high interest rates, is awesome. So you go and you get, you know, when when you go and you get, you you work with bars and and, and you find, you know, you delve into their situations and you help them get reestablished. It, you know, there's a real good sense, there's a real good feeling you get from that. And, and not to mention the feeling, you know, it's the, um, what you're doing in that case is you're applying knowledge. That's the leverage, leverage in this case with mortgage note investing. So whereas if you're wholesaling or you're flipping or you're landlording, your, your leverage is always, you know, you're leveraging financing from the bank or, or, or you're leveraging some type of sweat equity in, in that case. Well, with, with mortgage note investing, the leverage is your knowledge. That's what's in your head. So there's no 20% there's no down of your own cap, capital, 80% from the bank. It's, it's you know, you're buying something 30 cents on the dollar and then 70, 70 cents on the dollar is uh, being leveraged from what's inside your head. So that's kind of the process where, where you actually um, find yourself being a walking bank. And, and when, when you get to that point and you create enough of those sand pebbles to create a castle for yourself, then, then you know, all you really want to do at that point is buy more notes while you're kind of wash, rinse, repeat, that, that whole uh, thought process. I um, borrow the uh, slide from a peer, George Antone, who's written several wonderful books, um, Banker's Code, Wealth Code, and what, what he wants to relay with this picture is that if you go to any, any regional to major city uh, around the country, you look at the tallest banks and they're always owned by, you look at the tallest buildings, they're always owned by banks. <laughs> So what does that tell you? It tells you that the real wealth is created by being the bank. And if you notice, you know, there's no there's no buildings that are that are called, you know, we buy houses or or flippers <laughs> or us or any of that. It's, 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 it is what it is. So what, what I'm asking you tonight, what I'm asking you tonight is to give yourself the reward, give yourself the reward the banks give yourself, give themselves. Go ahead. Um, here's another case study. Uh, um, it, most of most of the um, the notes that I'm purchasing are are done from um, fellow peers in uh, and they're bought on wholesale levels. And that's something that I want to emphasize tonight is that, is that um, note investing, if done right, if sourced correctly, it deals with having relationships in place whereby um, you know, those are cultivated over time. It's not something overnight. Uh, you can buy notes like what I'm talking about here. You can buy them online tonight through um, companies like FCI or Loan MLS. You know, you go on there and you can buy, buy as many notes as you can handle tonight. But what you're gonna buy is you're probably gonna be selecting from a junkyard and you're gonna be paying retail price for it. So that's where you wanna have the relationships in place. Uh, here is a, is a uh, second mortgage note purchased in 2014. Lovely Palm Bay, Florida. And the, the borrower, it's a second mortgage note, borrower owed $44,000 and I picked it up for $3,500. I put $6,500 in workout legal expenses into, into that note and the, it turned out the borrower was uh, filed bankruptcy, which, is, which was a really positive thing in this case. And we had a state mediator come and negotiate a uh, loan modification between uh, myself and the borrower, which is a wonderful thing because whenever you have a mediator involved, uh, you'll usually receive a better, stronger loan modification that's sustainable. So in this case, um, 
you know, we got, I, I got a $44,000 uh, loan modification at 10.5% interest, and that seems high, 10.5% interest over 30 year period. But he was paying 15% before with the original note. So I hooked him up by, by lowering <laughs> 10.5%. Lowered his payment, and it, it, yeah, I mean, this was, you know, this was a deal that the, the, um, the mediator was very happy with. I mean, it was like, uh, so monthly payments, $407, and collected um, $7,300 of, of monthly payments and sold the note for uh, $24,000. You see the return on investment at uh, two, 211%. And what I wanna say is note investing is a portfolio game in that, in that you need to buy as a portfolio. You need to pick up four notes, pick up you know 10 notes, and, and then get those notes to perform, and then pick up more notes and grow that, grow that uh, castle. With, with you know added sand pebbles. It's, it's not something where you just buy one note, you know, one note, see how it goes, because you're committing a lot of resources, you're committing a lot of applied knowledge in your head, and the returns are so desirable, why wouldn't you want to just go and grow it until you have the passive income that's you know, providing the lifestyle that, that um, you're, you're looking for? Uh, go ahead, Frank. Uh, excuse me a second. Note sourcing, um, note sourcing in this industry. Um, note sourcing again goes back to to relationships. In this business, it's 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 done on a national level. You have to be a national player uh, to because you have to go to where the deals are. Um, I get asked a number of times, you know, oh, you know, let me know if you got something in the DMV and. You, you know, I only want to focus. Well, that's the real estate hat you have on that says, you know, I need to control. Yeah, you know, let me know an address, and I want to jump in my car with my binoculars and go see the property, <laughs> hang out in a tree, you know, see, the, you know, see how the windows look. And no, it's it's you have to go. The place can be in Alaska, it can be in California, Florida. I buy nationwide, and when you have the systems in place and the resources to go out and get all. You know, get all the reporting, the comps, the uh, drive-by appraisals. Um, you know, you know, other other vendors that do other services for you. Um, you know that there these vendors do it for you on a nationwide level. So it's about buying the best deal, not buying the deal that's closest to you. And one thing I'll say is that the the, the community is very small. We we all know each other. We all we all connect on social media. Uh, connect through phone, see each other at the conferences. Um, the relationships form from that. It's not like um, when you're in the real estate business, uh, you know, you can be in, in there could be a hundred brokers, in real estate brokers, and, and you could be an unethical person and run around and screw 50, uh, 50 of the hundred brokers. And you can still run around town, um, you know, doing deals or, or you know throwing out deals haphazardly. Well, in the in the note industry, you'd be blacklisted in a nanosecond because everybody talks to each other. So so um, you know all all that kind of uh, information travels very quickly. Whether you know you come across as an incompetent person or you come across as you know someone that's that's uh, uneth unethical in some way. So, but then again, if you're doing the right things, if you're building the relationship the right way, then it'll snowball in a positive way as well. So it can go both ways. Um, in terms of due diligence, it's all about systems in place. So I've created a um, three round, for myself, I've created a, a funnel effect. It's a three round due diligence process. So what that means is you can place 50 notes in like real estate, you have to look at a number of deals to find you know, the few that you want to take down. Well, in the note space, it's no different. So you dump in 50 notes, and then through each round, you filter out notes that, that um, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at for various reasons. And then at the end, you may have you know, three to four uh, notes that you want, to, you want to take down. And you have a fairly um, 
fairly strong understanding in terms of what the exit strategy will be and what the return on investment will be. So you take those numbers from the three to four that you want to take down. I have an Excel spreadsheet that I created uh, for return on investment. You plug in the numbers and it gives you a two year projection um, in terms of what you, know, what you should see uh, as a return. Workout process is um, after you buy the note, you know, getting, getting the bar to the table so they can start, it can start performing for you. Well, you have to know, you have to have a strong system in place in terms of, um, in terms of uh, understanding um, for each note what the timeline is of activity, what your goals are and what your strategy is based on the exit strategy you want to um, work towards. Whether it's uh, approaching the bar for a deed in lieu, or you know where they sign the property over, or, or or approaching the bar for an early discounted payoff, a loan modification, and so forth. So, with that, you're almost like an orchestra conductor in that in that you are you are <clears throat> conducting the whole orchestra. You are setting things up with the note servicer so they're efficient. They have everything they need. They're sending out the monthly statements. You're setting up the legal process where you understand, you understand within that state what the timeline is for legal activity, when motions are filed, when um, you know, keeping things efficient, as well as all the vendors you're using, whether you know, we use vendors for door knocking, we use uh, skip tracing, and other services to go and connect with the borrower. As well as yourself, when you're sending out communication to borrowers, you need to have everything on a timeline so that you know, you're working it like a business. So in closing with this workout process, every note is its own project. So you have to treat it like its own project. Uh, that, that gives you the best results in, in the end. Um, portfolio management is um, you know, how you have things set up. You need cash now, you set up the LLC. So that way when you do the work, you, you purchase notes, you do the workout, you receive the cash back into your LLC and then you can use that money. You have it readily available. Or if you have money that's sitting idle, you set up self-directed IRAs. Uh, I have an LLC that I operate out of, but I have uh, a self-directed IRA for myself and one for my wife. So we, I kind of juggle how, what I buy notes through, um, you know, based on the note types. and. So that, that will help you kind of grow the empire that you're looking to grow. Um, another kind of trick that you can do is let's say you put the 50 notes through the funnel and you come out with four notes. One note is a home run. You know it. I mean, it, everything's strong about that note. The borrower looks strong. They may have had it in you know, a medical incident you know, five years back, but they look rebounded. Credit report looks strong. They're paying everybody but you. Well, that may be the note that you put in your self-directed IRA. The note sellers don't care if you have two separate note sale agreements. So you buy that one through the self-directed IRA, and then you buy the other three through your LLC because that's going to be a longer, drawn-out process to work those notes. So that's kind of like things that um, you can factor in, as well as, um, as, well as uh, you know, uh, checking, uh, keeping your reporting up to date. You get remittance reports from loan servicing companies. Give you the breakout of principal and interest collected from the borrowers. Are your are your borrowers paying on time? Are they paying a little late? Having good communication with those borrowers because if they're paying a little late, you call them up on the phone. You find out, uh, it, you know, are they getting are, are they getting uh, paychecks delayed or? You know, are they paying other people in front of you? So you kind of have that good dialogue with the borrowers. That's real important for portfolio management because you want to keep everyone on track paying on time. And uh, lastly, um, setting up the notes where they're sellable is also another uh, important a aspect if you, if you are going to look to flip a few notes as, as you go along with things. Okay. Um, here's a note um, bought in 2015. And uh, the bar is in Pompano Beach, uh, Florida. It's a second mortgage. The bar owed forty-two thousand uh, dollars. Paid five thousand dollars for it. And this one was kind of interesting. The bar was very belligerent and, uh, and, and like verbally abusive. But you know, 
this game is, is not uh, for, for the thin-skinned. I mean, you have to go. You're going to have some rough conversations. I went through $5,000 of legal expense uh, getting this bar through litigation. When it turns out, the bar actually was renting out, finding that the bar is renting out the property, lives in Loudoun County, and has a, has a government contracting business. <laughs> so so I, I, you know, somewhere midway through the legal process, I go to myself and I'm like, well, let me set this guy up for reporting on his credit report, because I wanted to, I want the world to know that he's not paying on this mortgage and he's behind all his time. Well, the moment I did that, the borrower came to the table and I received $25,000 to go away after, after being $10,000 all in. So lesson learned is that now, what, next time set up the credit report like, right away. <laughs> so you kind of, you know, you learn, you learn things as, as, you, as you go along. But here's, um, here's kind of like closing point on this. With notes, you're working with the people, not the property. So that's, that's very important. It's just a, it's just a whole, um, it's a different reality. It's a different, it's a flip side to the coin where you're, you know, you're focused just on the property. Um, here's here's a, a note in Pueblo, uh, Colorado. It's uh, purchased it for um, uh, $4,000, $15,000 was owed. And um, workout expenses, sometimes the borrower comes to the table uh, quickly for loan modification. And, and uh, sometimes, you know, they're back on their feet, they're established after, you know, not paying for three, four years. And so it's really just, it's really just uh, you never know. And you never know how far you need to push it. But in this case, workout expenses were only $1,000. However, there was a lot of sweat equity in this one because uh, I had to play marriage counselor because they just got divorced. And so I was talking to both sides and everything else. So, so I put in a little bit more than the 1000 that way. But anyway, the um, loan modifications, $15,000, uh, 9% interest over, uh, over 15 years. So after receiving $4,000 in payment, I go and I sell the note for $9,000 uh, last week. So going back to the sandcastle, um, you know, you're, you're just building it with small pebbles and, and um, you know, building it up that way. Go ahead, Frank. Here's the first note I, I bought, ever bought on FCI. So going back to lessons learned, when, when I first started in 2013, I went to a RIA uh, in, in DC and heard from a national note trainer uh, who came into town and, and was talking about non-performing notes. I took that trainer's uh, weekend workshop and, and then after that, read every book on, on notes and put out my own cash to buy 10 non-performing first mortgage notes. And in doing so, I went as the real estate investor, I went and drove across Ohio to look at numerous properties over the course of two weeks because you know I was such a sophisticated real estate investor, focused on the property, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, thank God that I, I, I broke, barely broke even on that first 10 note purchase, um, but I did learn a lot. And the one thing that I, I, the one takeaway I learned is that the national trainers just give you enough information where you're gonna want, you know, that you're gonna need that other 80% of information, you know, during the upsell at the, at the workshop. So that's kind of one thing I learned. Also, the other thing I learned is that, um, is that I don't buy retail and I, I don't go to see those, the properties anymore. I have a note in Chantilly, Virginia, 30 minutes from my home, that I've never been to. I have no desire to go to it because I act now as the bank acts. And the bank, the banker sits in uh, his or her cubicle and you know information comes to them and they evaluate that information and they process things and then, and then they get wealthy on, on as more and more loan payments come in. That's the position I want to be in. And 
with with this, like it's kind of like the thought, like when you bought your home, did the banker go and check the plumbing when you know at your property? No, they didn't, because they sent an appraiser to go do that, and so that's kind of the the release of the control that um, that you want to have in order to have success in the note investing game. It's about building the systems and, and, and perfecting those systems that you're building versus, versus having control over the entire process. And if you do that, if you let the systems take place uh, and, and occur and you're the orchestra conductor, then, then you will find loan modifications hitting early discounted payoffs, deed in lieu, you're flipping properties, and, and, and a lot of people are doing a lot of the work for you and, and you're just kind of conducting the activity. That's, um... So anyway, this um, Tyro, Ohio is a, is a lovely rural area, I think by Manchester, Ohio area. And, and it's a country home. The, the property was vacant, I could tell, you know, three foot high grass when I got there. Borrower owed 100,000. I bought it for $10,000, and as soon as I bought it, the, I got in touch with the borrower, and they wanted out of that property. It's vacant. Most of the time, they're, they're done, mentally, physically. So he signed over the property. I paid $3,000 back taxes, and within a few months, hired a realtor, and within a few months, um, resold the property for $36,000. The, the retired couple that bought it paid $18,000, they paid that down payment, and then I took back a note for, for, eight, uh, for the other $18,000. And so you'll find that a lot with the um, properties you receive back. Um, at, this, at this value, there's a lot of banks that don't give, uh, they don't give people their due respect, and they don't wanna do loans at this, at this fair market value. So you'll find a lot of juice that can be squeezed in giving seller take back notes, um, you know, when you have to take back the property. And so, um, you know, great couple, and they made all their payments, and and I sold that note for uh, fourteen thousand after after getting uh, two thousand dollars in um, in payments. So what what I'm talking about tonight is uh, a two day workshop on June 23rd, June 24th, at, at, a, at a location um, near here in Bethesda. And what, what I'm covering in that two-day workshop is everything you need to know to source notes on a wholesale level. I, I'm not talking, you know, you're, you're going out buying retail. I'm talking what, what I've done to go and build relationships with these, with these peer folks and groups where you're gonna buy at a wholesale level. You're gonna have the three round due diligence uh, funnel that, that I've created that's been working very well for me where you place the 50 notes in, you know, outcomes three to four notes where you have a, a strong confidence level in terms of what you're buying. You know, all the workout process in terms of understanding the legal, legal timelines um, you know, all, the, uh, all the, the forms you need for borrower outreach, all the vendors you need to pull credit, skip trace, um, door knocking, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're in mortgage note investing, you get set up on all that. You, you're like, just like your bank, when you do a mortgage application, they pull your credit. They, they check your background. Well, I, I can do that off a laptop and cell phone. Uh, I'm set up with all those services. Um, so you learn all that, and then portfolio management, how, how it is you wanna set things up, so tips for self, setting up the self-directed IRA and, and setting up the LLCs to, to, to buy notes. Uh, we'll go through live note sourcing with the uh, online marketplace, um, you know, go through some of the sites like FCI, just kinda do preliminary look-throughs so, so you can just do quick uh, calculations and understand if, there's, if any of those notes are viable. Um, cover at least 20 case studies on uh, notes with uh, you know, various exit strategies performed. Um, buying through self-directed IRA, uh, we covered, and uh, 
just basically 100% of what you need to, to start sourcing notes um, the next day. And you know, that's, that's all I'm gonna be doing. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, here's a note that um, bought in uh, March through my self-directed IRA. Um, so so um, purchase the note, uh, the bar was non-performing before down in Richmond, Virginia. So it's, it's, it's truly a blessing when you get a Virginia note. I mean, there's not many out there. Most, a lot of the notes, you know, you, note opportunities you find in the hardest hit parts of the country. Uh, you, you know, when we had the economic crisis in Florida, uh, you know, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, Missouri, you know, Alabama, you kind of go through those states. So find something in Virginia is a real gem. Um, purchase it uh, for, it, as a performing note, $17,000, uh, $17,700. Um, principal balance left $23,000. Uh, interest rate, as you can see, 15%. 27 years left on, on, um, on uh, paying on the, uh, in terms of the term. So when they get done paying, paying off this note, whether it's a, it's a um, early <laughs> payoff or they, they use the whole 27.5 years, they'll owe a, a, an arrears payment of $44,000 to go and close out activities. So all this um, you know, comes at 20% uh, return on investment for, for uh, my initial purchase price. So what I'll say with that is that some of you, a lot of you are doing activity whereby you're making 20, 30%. Now, on deals you're doing, if you're a hard money lender, lender you're getting the points up front, you know, 12, 14% on the back end, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'm talking about here is 20% for 27 and a half years off your purchase. <coughs> So that's very significant. That's that you know if you're making that 20, 30 percent off you know after one year and you close out, you're on to the next deal. Well, if you buy this deal, then you're on to the next deal, but you're on to duplicating, looking to duplicate what you've done here as many times as you can. And so. What, what, I'm, what I'm discussing here is a two-day workshop. You'll get everything you need for sourcing, due diligence, um, workout, and portfolio management. An audio video library. I have five case studies that, that are recorded um, in detail. I kind of just browse through here quickly, but I'll go into specific detail how each one, how each one materialized. And all, all of my Excel tracking tools, um, you, a database where you collect all the borrower information and then you report ongoing notes as the activity unfolds within that, within that particular note. And you, you can use that for all the, all the notes that you buy, as well as um, return on investment spreadsheet that you're plugging in. You're, you, you know, you're, gonna, you're gonna plug in those three to four notes that you're gonna buy into that return on investment spreadsheet. Um, the resource list is um, extremely valuable. There is, um, that's, worth, that's worth the price of this whole thing right here. Uh, I've had people, I, I've had a case in Florida. I'm, I'm a big buyer in Florida. I, I, that's where I, my preference is to buy the most, most amount of my notes because the equity spikes there have been phenomenal. So I had, a, I had an attorney um, in Florida that that was dragging out cases. I had all my notes with this one Floridian uh, attorney. He was dragging out my cases. I find this $20,000 later, and he was doing tactics that were enticing the bar to go and, and contest things. And so I moved all my cases from that attorney into a, a very reputable attorney who charges a la carte, very fair, gives great service. Well, that's just kind of one example of of vendors that you go through and you find the good ones, lose the bad ones. So I've assembled the list of um, all the vendors that you need to, to perform uh, on um, converting 
defaulted mortgage notes to be performing mortgage notes. Uh, forms library is a collection of, of documents that you'll use to reach, reach out to the bars and, and get them to the table. Because everything's done in parallel with notes, if done successfully. So you have the, <coughs> you have the attorneys that, again, orchestra conductor. So you have the attorneys that, that are filing motions, you know, de demand letters, um, complaints, you know, judgments, etc. Well, you need to be in parallel with those attorneys, sending out bar letters uh, of various kind, having the door knockers hit, um, you know, reaching out with calls and emails, as well as having, um, as well as having the note servicing company send out the monthly statements. So all this is kind of that wake up call that you're, you know, you're connecting with the bar. And when you do touch with that bar, you can, like in those case studies, you can make those healthy returns. However, you know, it's, it's uh, important just to, um, just to be conscious of, of giving the bars plans that they can afford. Because if you give them something, you give them a modification that they can't afford, they're gonna stop paying. At, at a certain point, so um, it, you want to be, uh, you want to treat the bars with a lot of respect. You want to treat them, give them plans that they can afford, and be kind. That's kind of the whole, um, you know, premise of this industry is you're helping them get back on their feet. If you're not helping them, you're hurting them, and you're just like the large bank that was beating them up to pay thirty thousand dollar reinstatement fee to get them back on their feet. They don't have thirty thousand dollars. But they may have, you know, uh, two thousand dollars to show that they're serious, and then you want to cut their interest rate, you want to cut their payment down, you want to be, you know, you want to be a kind person with this industry. You'll be rewarded uh, very well just just being a kind person. Go ahead, um, yeah. So this all comes out ten thousand dollars, and um, of course that's not the the, the price we're offering. Um, uh, if you're for non RIA members, uh, Washington RIA members, uh, price tag is $2,400. Um, for for Washington RIA members, it's $1,995, and we're and we're going to hold the workshop. It's going to be a full day, uh, full two day um, workshop um, on June 23rd and 24th. And and uh, please bring it. You're welcome to bring a spouse or partner for 50% off. And that's my presentation. I hope uh, you have something out of it. Yeah. Two questions. What does UPV mean? Oh, I'm and, so sorry. And what is a yeah. door knocker? <laughs> um, UVB, un unpaid principal balance. It, it's what they, yeah, it's what they owe, what they owe in terms of balance, but does not include a past due arrears. Or, or late fees that have been tacked on. So if they haven't paid in five years, um, you know they owe, they still owe the balance, which where it was at at the time they defaulted. But they also owe the monthly late fees that have been um, collecting, and they owe every every day, you know, the per diem interest uh, accumulates. And and that's where um, you know going back, if if you're going to work with the bars, then you know that's a tool that you have to say, hey, look, I'm not looking like Wells Fargo was looking. For thirty thousand dollars to reinstate you, you know what? What can you afford? You know, a few thousand dollars. Let's let's just bring you back to the table and get you paying again. And door knockers. And door knockers are are um, you know people that, that go out and uh, there's companies that send will send people out and they'll knock on the door and um, and literally give uh, the bar the, your cell phone uh, their cell phone and say, hey, the lender's on the phone and would like to talk to you, and and then. <laughs> And if no one picks up, no one answers the door, they'll leave a notice on the door saying, hey, you know, we're, we're here representing, you know, this lending institution and we'd like to connect with you. And, yes. Sure. Um, it's, it's a note whereby, I mean, technical uh, definition would be anybody who's 90 days and beyond past due. In the cases that where where I see this note, where I buy this note as an investor, it's already gone from you know bank to hedge fund to investment capital you know firm and 
all these chains, and then it reaches me. And, and by the time it reaches me, it's three to six years in, in default. They haven't made a payment in three to six years. Yes? Have you been able to buy a second mortgage note and negotiate down the first mortgage? Um, or you don't need to? No, no, I haven't, I haven't run mortgage. across that, yeah. And, and, and I know that uh, a lot of times the, um, you know, first is a larger institution and there's zero negotiation, <coughs> even if the negotiation makes sense for everybody involved. Yes, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead, I think you were next. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty open ended in terms of now now how you proceed with it. So when I when I put a note through a self directed IRA, my servicing company connects directly. I have to be out of the loop. My name can't be on anything, and I can't have any. I can't pursue any activity myself. Everything has to go from the note servicing company to the self directed IRA or your attorney to the self directed IRA. But in terms of assets you can buy, you can buy a boat. You know, land, businesses. Sure. You, know. But you can't knock on their door. Or oh, no, no. But you can set up loss mitigation through your servicing company, and they can do everything on your behalf. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If someone just starting with uh, note investment, uh, would it be a good practice to basically start out trying to buy performing or not? No. I, I think either way works. Um, your... your um, if you buy performing, there's less, it's less inventory. It's harder, you know, at a small level, uh, to, it's harder to, to um, you know, uh, find inventory for that. Because those are so, such in demand. Um, several of these notes uh, I sold within a 24 hour period. And I got bought money wired. So when you, goes back, reputation, um, if you know the note seller and you're known as a person to do what you say you're going to do, if you have your files in order, all your allonges, assignments and mortgages, your collateral file, if everything's in order and, and you're known to have that reputation, you can, you can sell one of these performing notes in a nanosecond. And, and I mean, two of those case studies sold within 24 hours. In terms of me reaching out to the seller, and them wiring me money within 24 hours. Yes, I'm uh, sorry. Two questions. When you buy uh, non-performing notes, and no matter what you do, you're still going to make a performing note, then the, the house is occupied, do you just go and foreclose on it and take possession of the house? Yeah, you, you can't, you, yeah, yes. You can't have step. So legally, you can't, you can't begin foreclosure motion, file the complaint, and then stop, and then start again. So you have, to, you have to go through the whole process, and you have to take back that property, file an eviction. Even if, if it's a second mortgage and it's subject to the first, you still have to go through with it because you can get that property back, and you can rent that property out as a way to recoup some capital. Second question, when you buy a second note on a property and uh, the house goes into foreclosure on the first one, then you get right title anyway. Um, if, if, if there's equity left over, then you know, you'll know you get some money out of that. But, but mostly, yeah, but most likely no. Yeah. So how do you avoid buying the notes? <laughs> um, <laughs> you the examples of second notes. Yeah, no, there, there's, there's cases, I mean, there's cases. So when you buy, you buy in a, as a portfolio. So you may buy four notes, one may be a dud. That would be a dud. One may be a home run, and two you may make on average. So the key to this whole business is, is you buy as a portfolio and you buy ongoing. And, and then you, you, um, you, know, you offset those losses with those notes. But it's, it's an investment like anything else, so you can't avoid that. Um, you talked a little bit about risks. Um, can you talk about ways you could Um, if you have a second mortgage note and you and you do not have a penny of equity, and they file um, Chapter 13, they could file a motion to avoid your lien. And um, 
So on one hand, uh, I think the statistics about 90% of the people that file bankruptcy, chapter 13, chapter 7, never fulfill the plan. So they, you know, it, and a lot of times it's because of, I mean, it's debatable, but you could say it's because of what they were sold by the, by the bankruptcy attorney. They, they thought it was something different. They thought that they could file bankruptcy, chapter 13, and all their debts would just, you know, magically disappear. But it doesn't work like that. You know, you go through a process. It's a debt realignment. You have to make monthly payments to a trustee. So, so they can file that motion to avoid your lien, and if they do fulfill that, that bankruptcy and, and they, are, you know, they are discharged, then you could have your lien stripped. If someone hasn't paid in six years, what incentive is there for them not to continue to pay? Well, not pay? That's what he shows if you're at the train. Here's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but I, I will say this, though. I, 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 the question, because I, I do this all the time, John. Um, here's the thing. The, the, banks, the banks are horrible at, at real estate game. I mean, you see it with your short sale activity and everything else. It, 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 you know, half the time they don't know what they're doing, but the other half, they're, they're also burdened with over-regulation. So, so what they figured, uh, maybe like 2011, 2012, when they were holding all this bad debt and it was hindering their lending abilities because you know, they were having this, this um, you know, bad debt on their, on their balance statements, what they decided is that they would just bundle it up and sell it off. So what happened over the course of time, obviously they sell, they bundle it, sell it in the hundreds of millions of dollars to hedge funds, and then, and then it was just a flipping process, flipping the paper all the way down the line, till it gets to you know like myself, you know a guy like me, and then who rolls up the sleeves and and does the work to get it performing. Everyone else for the past five years has not filed for foreclosure. They've sent out these reinstatement letters, you know, hoping that someone comes to the table with twenty, thirty thousand dollars to reinstate their loan. But a lot of times these borrowers don't, and they get to me, and then you know someone who's not overregulated. I don't have the regulations that the banks have, so I can be flexible. I can look at the person's uh, financial situation and find out what they can afford and give them a, a deal that they can afford. Yes. Now, are the notes sold for you or directed from the uh, owner of the notes? And how often do you get to see these notes in the uh, to um, buy in the portfolio? If I'm understanding. Uh, I buy like the LLC, self-directed, like I own um, the LLC. So if I buy, um, what do you mean by see the notes? Like you mean see the physical files or? No, when, you, when you're buying the notes and stuff like that, how are the notes presented to yourself? So you can buy oh, how, um, how, how are they sold through you or through um, the, the note holder directly or? No, the note, yeah, no, no not the, not the, um, the, the, yeah, the, the, the um, note seller, they own the note, and um, they'll, contact, they'll contact you with an Excel spreadsheet, which is called a tape, uh, which is essentially a, a portfolio. And, and you'll, you know, in some cases, you have to take down the whole opportunity, and in other cases, um, you, you can cherry pick off those, off those uh, tapes. However, what they show you is they show you the, the Excel spreadsheet with pertinent information, and then they give you uh, digital copies of the collateral file, uh, the note, the, um, the mortgage, uh, sometimes a credit report, and, and so on. So then it's your job to go and, and uh, dig through and make sure now everything's in order. How often is this, uh, the notes presented? <clears throat> I'm sorry? How often are the notes presented? Oh, well, it, it's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not like a formal process. It's, it's, it's like almost like you're, you have a relationship with someone and they want to they wanna offload um, you know, some notes to you or, or it's an investment capital firm and you're on their short list and so they reach out to you. So it's sporadic. It, it, you, know, you can have a few opportunities at any given time or none for a few months. Yes, I'm sorry. When you buy the notes, do you not get the entire collateral file ultimately? Yeah, when you buy the notes within, uh, generally you want to see that physical collateral file within a few weeks. Does it include all the documents from the original loan origination or only selected documents? Mostly selected documents. Um, you know, you, you, you've, uh, you've uh, hit some pay dirt if you get the, all the original documents, but, 
most of the time it's just been filtered down, you know, through through all the parties that have been flipping the notes, and you'll just get the the pertinent documents. And notwithstanding that, you're still able to go forward legally without having, for example, uh, the entire package. At all day long. You do get all the lunches and, and the, the uh, uh, endorsements, I presume. Yeah, it's it's a. Um, to your point, correct, absolutely. To the launches and assignments, it's a buyer beware industry. It, it's when you go, you buy uh, when you go buy a property, you go to the title company, right? And then you have some pretty guy or girl, and they go and interpret, you know, the legalese and the contract documents. They do land record searches, give you title insurance, give you coffee, water, and all that. It's just, you know, it's a pleasant experience. When you go buy a note. When you go buy notes or, or a note, you're, it's you, the note buyer, and the note seller in a four-page note sale agreement that that's, um, really is just a buyer beware document. And so if you did not – if you don't know what you're doing and you bought incorrectly because you didn't do something in your due diligence, then you're, you eat that for your lunch. Martin, I think if you spoke to your due diligence process, it would answer a lot of the questions people ask you. Okay. I don't think they realize that you really do. There's three rounds of very intense due diligence. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and, and part of that is, is reviewing all the collateral file. That's in my last round. When I know I'm not going to waste my time looking at all the collateral files until I'm ready to buy. And I know I want these three, four documents. I want to make sure all the initials are, are on every page for the notes and, and, um, and mortgages. Make sure they're signed. Make sure it's notarized. You know, make sure all the chains are in order, et cetera, et cetera. What kind of support do you have after the two-day workshop? Um, the two-day workshop, you'll have everything you need to go and you know off and, and do what you need to do. But it's not um, at that point, you know, I break off. I mean, I can have, um, um, you know, I've been toying with the idea of doing some type of mentoring um, program to you know help people go through the process. But you know, at this point, I don't have anything set up. I don't know, John, do you think uh, one question or would you? I'm sorry. Do you think one or two questions left or? No, I think that's good. You guys don't hate me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of one yeah, some question. I think you've given your whole trade away. Well, no, no, no. John, John there's, there's, no, absolutely not. There's like, uh, this, this, this is so, so, such a rich industry. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I just say curiosity. Question. Yeah. The very first example you gave, you got it for Value was 50, but you resold it for 16? Um, I resold it for 31,000. Okay. Yeah, 31,000 as is. So without you know without swinging a hammer, and and that's the thing. They owed 50,000, but a lot of times they're buying during the financial crisis. So they're buying at the top of the market, and and. Fifty thousand was just the principal balance. You look at the past due arrears. There's probably another thirty, forty thousand on the back end just for that. So, so I'm calling you up, Eric, and I'm saying, you know, you just got divorced, and you just you want to be miles away from this home, and and so I call you up, and you you owe me, uh, you know, ninety thousand dollars, and I say, okay, just sign this document. I'll email it to you. And you, you express mail it back to me, and I'll forgive you of ninety thousand dollars. It's never happened, you know. That's kind of so. Then you and the property has been vacant six months or whatever the heck, and there's grass growing, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, I'm selling that for thirty one thousand. I'm not going to get fifty thousand for it. Yeah, they signed they signed the property back to me, and I resold it to a veteran. Yeah. What's the What's the time for? Oh, that one was uh, maybe within all, all wrapped up um, five to six months. Buying the note, taking the property back. Did you have to go through court processes like foreclosure? No, they just if deed and lose it. They signed my attorney. They signed the yeah, my attorney drafts up the document. Okay. They take it to the bank. And you remember, folks, what Martin is saying is when he buys these notes, now so he's a private owner of these notes. And I know a lot of you in this room about short sales. And you know, where's Eli? See, he's pulling the sandwich. Eli and I are working on a short sale going on two years. Right. Mark is in a bank. He can make decisions in 10 minutes. Yeah. He can mm. offer these people I, different interest rates, <laughs> different payments, different balances. He can take the house back. He doesn't have to take the house back. So he has, and then the homeowner, as he said, is so grateful to him 
because no one else is going to do that. And if they did it, it would take them two years. <laughs> so that's the advantage when you own that notice he does, is he can <coughs> recreate that to make him tremendous returns, either payments or equity, or he doesn't have to, either way. So he can make those decisions that you have to be quick. And as he teaches you how to find these notes and how to, how to manipulate them, if that's the right word, and to massage them, that's, that's the power of non-performing uh, notes back into performing. I mean, it's, it's, it's magical. Once you learn how to do it, it's, it's, you feel like you're stealing. Plus, as Martin, you're seeing he's a, he's a family guy, he's a humble guy, it feels good to help people. And he is helping people get back on their feet and feeling good about their housing situation. There's some, he's like the white knight coming to rescue folks. <laughs> and you do feel good. You're still making a tremendous return, and you should. You're a business person. But he's also offering relief to people that have nothing in sight. And that's what he can teach you, and it, it's a win-win. Yes? So you find notes, liens, and judgments prior to auctions. No, no, I just buy. I buy the mortgage note, and if I buy a second mortgage note, um, you know, I'm, I'm, or or first, you know, I'll do an OE, O and E title search. Um, you know, I'll find out what's on the property. Um, a lot of times, you pull the credit, and you can you can also see what types of judgments or or uh, bankruptcies. Check Pacer, so I check bankruptcy records. Read through that. That's also you know I'll cover that also in training. Um, getting getting set up with Pacer, so you can see um, bankruptcy documents. A lot of times uh, when they file bank, you'll find a lot of times people file bankruptcy. So they go to a bankruptcy attorney and they pay four thousand dollars. Bankruptcy attorney sells them on a panacea. They start the bankruptcy proceeding, and then it wasn't what the borrower thought it was, and then the borrower's case gets dismissed for uh, non-responsiveness or something like that. Well, meanwhile, you can go into PACER, you can go into the, see the bankruptcy documents. The borrower signed a, did a, filled out a voluntary petition and pretty much gave their whole life history, and then you can go pull that down, and, and it just gives you more insight because um, you know, everything is about understanding the borrower's profile um, it's about understanding what happened when they defaulted. Where are they at now? Are they remarried? Are they are they healthy now? Because they got they went through a medical issue. Um, you know, remarried. Um, are they reemployed? Because they lost their job before. Are they underemployed? Uh, are they paying Nordstroms because they have a shopping problem, or are they just they just don't have the money? You kind of you kind of become a detective in that. But we'll go through in the training, um, pulling credit, um, reading through a credit report so you can understand the borrower's profile. We'll cover that. We'll understand understanding setting up skip tracing and reading through uh, skip tracing documents to understand the borrower's profile. Um, everything that I do to perform due diligence on that note so you're making your money when you buy, we will do hands-on at that workshop. I'm not gonna leave you with you know the 20%, giving you 20% and then with the upsell to give you the rest of rest of the ingredients. I give you everything and, and we'll go through every document that, uh, that that you'll need to go through to understand what you're buying. Um, yes. If there's a particular note that you wanna buy that's still owned by a big bank processed by SPS, is that possible or likely? Um, the, most of the notes that I buy were originated by, by large banks, but I kind of, right now, where, where I'm at for my own buying is it's just, I'm, I'm relying on just peer groups to go and connect with me. They'll let me know what they have. Very seldom do I buy a seller, you know, originated note, you know, a seller take back note. Um, most always, Wells Fargo is actually probably the biggest originator I buy from, but I'm, you know, four or five links down down the chain on that, I buy. One last uh, point, Martin. And, you know, the, the, um, as I'm finding in the industry, there's a, a ton of knowledge out there, but there's not any one definitive source that has all the knowledge. There are people that have, like yourself, a specialist that, that understands. It, it's amazing to me, sorry, but it, it's uh, so complex, it's like a minefield. But to you, it became simple you found a way through, <laughs> and 
that, that's the hand holding that you're talking about here, right? I mean, literally guiding people through that minefield. Is, is yeah. that not what the, the Well, I, I appreciate that, William. Um, it's, it's, this, there's nothing easy about this industry. Uh, there, there are a lot of um, landmines. Um, but the key is, though, those landmines keep 95% of the real estate investors out of this space. So, you know, when, when you go and look at the, the real estate investing industry, you know, everybody wants to be, on, you know, like the sexy shows show flippers, you know, and they got six pack abs. And, and then, you know, you go to the auction block and, but the auction block, you know, the auction's not what it used to be. I mean, you know, you have people overpaying properties. Um, so it's just, just, you have 95% of the investing community chasing small, a smaller, smaller percentage of the deals. In the note space, if you have, if you have competency and, and you make it a passion and you learn the industry and set up all the resources for yourself, you will find a, an abundance of note opportunity. I mean, nationwide, it's just, and deals come to you. And when you wanna offload a deal, buyers, come, you know, buyers are there readily with, with tons of capital to, to offload you know, anything you have. So that's what I just say, you know, to be, be where most people are not. You know, so wherever the herd is, you know, be away from where the herd is. Yeah, we happen to get uh, into the note business uh, on our side. And so the question I have for you, do you buy large tapes, small tapes, and what's your deal size? Um, at, at any given time, like the first deal I bought, you know, 10 notes, first mortgage right. notes, um, right. you know, I have, uh, you know, I like to take down uh, four or five note, notes at a time when I buy, because um, what I do is just with myself, I, I pace my buying. So I like to buy ongoing, but I like to buy smaller note sizes versus, you know, taking down 100 notes and then because uh, at this time, it's, it's me, you know, I'm the company. So I have to, I have to take that in, into consideration. Folks, if you're interested in this training, it's a simple process. You walk back, talk with Brenda, she'll fill out a slip. Mark will be in touch with you, give you location and time, give you dates, obviously. Um, be securing the location now. Um, I assure you, after the weekend, you're gonna walk out of there a lot of confidence in note buying, and that being said, it's a niche business. Um, it's a part of the real estate investment business that a lot of people don't understand, and a lot of people don't take advantage of. And you have someone here in our local area offering you the opportunity to do this, um, I take advantage of. By the way, next month, many of you know, as you finish Martin's training, he's gonna touch on this, I know, in his training. But we also have uh, Jack Howe, the Mid-Atlantic guy, Ray, coming to talk to us about self-directed IRA. It was a perfect opportunity to match two concepts of real estate investment to literally change your life. If you're involved in real estate investment, combining notes and self-direction, which Mark has done, well, we'll, we'll change it. We'll change it uh, for many, many years to come. So we hope you take advantage of this. Thank you for coming. Mark's gonna stay up here if you wanna to talk to him more. If you wanna sign up for this training, see Brendan in the back. We'll see you next month. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Hey, appreciate that, Scott.